the next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and open up the profile view. So let me hit escape here to exit out of that complex geometry tool. And the profile uh, tool can be found under the vertical geometry or under the geometry tab, the vertical group. Um, it's located here at the very leftmost section of this of this tab. Um, we're going to go ahead and select that open profile model tool. If I move my cursor over into the views, you'll be able to see that the prompt is asking me to locate that plan element. So that plan element is going to be our horizontal ditch geometry. I'm going to hover over the uh, the ditch geometry and left click and then the prompt is going to ask me to select or open a view. I'm going to go ahead and use view 2 since this one's already arranged and left click to open up the profile view of our of our ditch geometry. Uh, since I already had set the terrain as active, we're able to see the existing ground along this horizontal ditch geometry. Um, and like I mentioned, since I'm following the existing ditch, the beginning and the end of that ditch of this existing um, ground is actually matching where we want our proposed ditch to match the existing ditch section that will remain. Um, a good thing to note, let me go ahead and hit escape to move out of this tool. A good thing to note is if we were to go back into this horizontal geometry and say I were to make a change here, you'll notice that the profile moves and changes along with the horizontal geometry. So that's something that's something to keep in mind, right? So we're we're looking at the existing ground right at where this horizontal ditch geometry is meeting our terrain. You know, go ahead and undo that. Um, another detail worth mentioning is that these gray bars are showing the PIs of each of, uh, at each spot along this um, horizontal geometry. So. Uh, that's this. This shows how many sec how many different sections I I put into this into this geometry. So before I start drawing our profile, I do want to add some bearings uh, to our profile view. So that's going to help me. Um, that's going to help me in drawing this profile and setting it up at an optimal spot. So to do this, I guess I first want to make sure that my profile attaches to the flow line of this culvert down here that's being extended. Um, and so I've already prepped the flow line for this extended culvert and modeled it. And so I'm going to have it pop up in the profile view by using a tool called Profile Intersection Point. So from the Geometry tab, I'm going to go ahead and go under the Vertical section. And under the Profile Creation tool group, I'm going to select Profile Intersection Point. Okay. The profile intersection point, once I select that tool, the prompt is going to ask me to locate the element to show the intersection. In this case, that's going to be our ditch horizontal geometry. So I'm going to move into view one and select the ditch horizontal geometry. So once I select it, the prompt is then going to ask me to locate the element which intersects. In this case, the element with which intersects is going to be the cross culvert. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit in view one to that ditch, and you'll notice that I can select the flow line. So I'm going to go ahead and select that flow line. And once I do, hopefully you noticed that a little pink dot has appeared in our profile. And so the same, the same thing applies to what we were was what I was talking about earlier, where if you change the horizontal geometry. The vertical geometry will change. Same thing happens here, right? If I make a horizontal change and decide to move this culvert either to the left or to the right, this dot should move along with it. And same for the profile, right? If I make changes to the flow line here, this dot should move up and down based on what the flow line is doing of our extended culvert. Okay, so now that I have that, um, I do want to add one more bearing, and so I do want to show the edge of pavement um, in this profile view. And so this is just kind of like a boundary to make sure that for whatever reason I'm not designing a ditch, 
that ends up being higher than the edge of pavement. Believe me, I, I've seen that before. So to do this, I'll be using a tool called Profile by Slope from Elements. Okay, so from the Geometry tab, we're going to go over to our vertical group and select the Element Profiles tools. And from those, you should be we should be able to see the Profile by Slope from Elements. So first element to profile, that's going to be our um, ditch geometry. So I'll go ahead and select it. Now it's saying locate next element to profile. We really only want to profile this element. So I'm going to right click uh, to do a reset to complete. So right click and then locate the reference element. The reference element should be the edge of pavement. And so that's going to be found in my corridor. So you can see here as I hover over this, that's the left edge of pavement that belongs to that SH-155 corridor. I'm going to go ahead and left click on this edge of pavement reference element. And so now it's asking me for the slope parameter. In this case, I'm going to keep it at 0% because I want to know exactly where that edge of pavement is. So I'm going to left click to accept that. I'm going to go ahead and left click as well to accept this uh, point selection as all and, as, and left click to accept the profile adjustment as none. And same thing for the vertical offset. So left click once more. And so as you can see now, it's drawn that edge of pavement in there. Because so I do want to change the vertical or the feature definition on here to edge of pavement. So I could have done that at the beginning before I started drawing the um, or using the tool profile by slope from element. Um, but I'll go ahead and do that and switch that over to road edge of pavement. So that just makes it easier on my eyes so I can really distinguish um, between the profile I'm going to draw for the ditch and that edge of pavement. Um, so next thing is um, I have had some cases where sometimes when designing a ditch, uh, we need to make sure that the water carried by that ditch does not seep into the lower sections of the pavement structure or the pavement design. So let's assume that that's the case for this project. And so if we had, say, for example, a 2-inch overlay, 10 inches of flex space, and about 8 inches of subgrade, let's see, so that's, uh, so that's 20 inches of, okay, so that's about a foot and a half. Let's, let's call it a foot and a half. So assuming we have a pavement of about a foot and a half, we can set this upper bound, or we can set an upper bound uh, by using a tool called the Profile Offset Transition. And so that's going to help me really visually see and make sure that my the bottom of my ditch isn't isn't feeding water into the bottom of the pavement design. So from the geometry tab, the vertical group, we're going to grab the select complex or we're going to select the complex geometry and we're going to use the profile offset transition tool. So I'm going to left click on that profile offset transition. Uh, once I move my cursor into the view, it's going to be ask for uh, to locate the element, the element that we're going to do here or that we're going to select here is going to be that edge of pavement line. So we'll go ahead and select that edge of pavement. Uh, okay. So before I move forward, I do want to change the feature definition of this. I don't want it to be ditch bottom center. Um, since it's just an upper bound, I I'm okay with using that this draft do not construct feature definition. So we'll go ahead and select that. Um, I already have here, it's going to be at an offset of one foot and a half. That's the, that's the depth of the pavement design. And then I'll go ahead and make sure that I have lock to start and lock to end since I want it throughout the entire w um, length of the, uh, of the ditch profile. Okay, so now that I have all of those set up in my dialog box, I should be able to just left click through and conform in the prompt. So I'll go ahead and do that. So I'll left click to confirm the start parameters. And then I'll lock, to, oh, I thought I had it as well. So I'll lock to, or lock to end here and then left click to confirm the end parameters. I'm not gonna mirror. So I'll go ahead and hit no on the mirror, left click. And then I'll hit escape to move out of the tool. And so now we can see the bottom of that ditch or the bottom of that pavement design in this ditch profile. Awesome.